How's it going? As you can see here, we have this 2018 6.7 liter Ford Power Stroke diesel engine. It's got some potential problems. Just because it's got this shiny chrome doesn't mean it's going to get you home. And one of the common problems on these diesel engines is the crankcase ventilation filter piling up. And what happens is, is the engine can't breathe, so it starts blowing oil out of the seals. Thankfully, my good buddies at Dirty Diesel Customs sent me this kit to put on this truck, which deletes the crankcase ventilation filter and helps my truck breathe as it should. If someone was muffling you with a rag like this, you'd probably die, just like the engine will eventually die um, from suffocation. Thankfully, none of the other seals are leaking, like the rear main or anything, but if yours is leaking, immediately go and buy this kit right now. Here's the link, it's also in the description. Make sure you buy it through the link. Um, I, th there's some sort of benefit for that. I don't remember what it is, but do that. The other thing is we got these super handy dandy instructions and I'll tell you, someone that speaks English wrote it so you can actually understand what it's saying and this is made in Canada. You know, everyone's all about that made in America stuff, but I'll tell you, Canada, we make good stuff too. So check out the boys at Dirty Diesel Customs. I also got this cool t-shirt, which I think is super cool. We're gonna put this thing on and uh, I'd recommend putting it on your truck too. So you don't, you know, blowing out seals and stuff on your new truck that you just put your life savings into. All right, let's uh, crack her open here. I'm kind of a wannabe mechanic. Let's read some of the instructions here, why don't we? Not legal for sale or use on pollution controlled motor vehicles. Legal only on off-road applications. Well, we'll call this an off-road vehicle, why don't we? Step one, remove the upper fuel filter by disconnecting both fuel lines. To disconnect the fuel lines, release the locking tabs, then pull the fuel line straight back from the fuel filter. To remove the fuel filter, turn the filter counterclockwise while pulling it up. So we're gonna do that right now. I don't have a clue what I'm doing, to be honest, but we're trying our best. Whoop, just spilling fuel everywhere. There's three clips and they're pretty easy. You can figure it out, no problem. We're on step number two, boys. Using an 11 millimeter socket, loosen the factory hot side intercooler pipe clamp from the intercooler and rotate it out of the way. Easy. Okay, so we got the intercooler pipe out of the way. Let's read the next step. Remove the corrugated tube that routes from the lower intake manifold to the CCV housing. Rotate the silver connector counterclockwise while holding the black tube stationary to remove. Insta install the rubber, supplied rubber cap into the intake manifold. All right, here we go, boys. Here's our intercooler pipe. Okay, so we got that off. And you do have to use two hands, so if you only have one hand, sorry, it's not gonna work. Here is the little rubber thing that goes over top. And, um, You'll see it there. Now, as you can see here, there's that little white uh, rubber piece, and that is where the intake hose comes off of. I'm gonna put a zip tie on that just for extra securement, but that should be good. So now the next thing we're gonna do is remove the bo four bolts that fasten the CZ CCV house into the valve cover using a 10 millimeter socket. These bolts can be a little hard to get at. I have this handy dandy Milwaukee uh, power tool here. You know, I always say you can pretty much do anything with a Mastercraft or Stanley or Harbor Freight basic, you know, ratchet set. So I'm gonna pull this off. Oh man. This last one is not an easy one to get at. No doubt, no doubt, no doubt. I'll be the first to say it's not an easy task. What's the next step here? Remove the CCV housing by pulling up then towards the front of the vehicle. Oil will run out. Be careful, don't wreck This is where your crankcase ventilation filter goes. And uh, yeah. You know what, in my books, the more of this stuff you can take off the engine, the better. Throw your big O-ring onto your vent plug. So I'm just gonna throw it on here. Perfect. Let's see what the next instruction is. A small and put the small ring onto your flow through plate. Use a bit of grease to hold the small ring on the flow through rate plate to aid in assembly. Note that the big O ring will only fit in the correct piece, but the small O ring will fit either. So take care. 
that you get it right the first time. Don't be goofing around. This piece here, that's the small one. The other one is the big one. I think I cut my finger here. It's time for the next step. Install the vent plug using the supplies flange, flange, head bolt, and a 10 millimeter socket. Let's do that. That's this piece right here that says dirty on it. And you know what? I already got it dirty, so that's just great. This little guy right here is the one you're gonna wanna use. Goes in here like that, and then that goes in that hole. You can figure out which hole it needs to go in. Once you've got it in there, take your 10 millimeter wrench and uh, tighten it down. Don't go too tight because you don't want to snap it off. You know what I'm saying? Step seven, install the flow through plate using the supplied SHCS and a five millimeter Allen driver. At this point, you can either install it with the hose bunk pointing to the front or the back of the vehicle, depending on how you want to run the drain hose. Either configuration works. So do whatever you want. Now we're almost done. Like this is so fast and so easy and this can save you a lot of trouble and a lot of money because to do a rear main on this truck is probably in the realm of $3,500 because the transmission has to come off. So don't goof around, just put this kit on uh, cheap insurance. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna make sure it's pointing down off of the valve cover, down towards the ground. And I've got these two bolts right here, your Allen key and uh, then we're gonna put our hose on and then we're almost done boys. So if you're anything like me, you're always gonna be dropping stuff. So make sure you have a little magnet close by because I've already dropped a couple things. All right, so we got that piece in. I'm just gonna take an Allen key now and snug it up. Now we're just gonna put our vent hose on, which is this guy right here. And the good news is this kit actually comes with a band clamp, a really good one, not a junky one. All the hose that you can need. So now it's your job to route this vent hose to wherever you want it to go. Now, here's the other thing. If you have a vehicle that's a bit higher in the miles, chances are it's gonna have a little bit of blow by and there might be a little bit of oil drip. So you might wanna put it into a catch can. If you have a low kilometer vehicle and you're doing this right off the hop, like you should be, you probably won't have any blow by ever because the engine can breathe. So we've got her installed boys. Now we've just got to put our fuel filter back on and our intercooler charge pipe back on and we're done boys. So as you can see, your filter is now gone. There's nothing that can get plugged up and your engine can breathe normally. For that red piece, that is where that hose um, slips onto. And I ran mine just inside of the inner fender here. Remember, the earlier that you put this dirty diesel kit on, the longer your seals will last because there's no pressure from the inside of the engine trying to push oil out. So again, go buy one for yourself. If you just bought a brand new truck, go put it on. You can do it, no problem, no problem. The hardest part is getting the two 10 millimeter bolts out of the back, but again, with a little bit of patience and a little bit of anger, you can get them out. And again, I wanna give a big thank you to the guys at Dirty Diesel. And if you buy any kit other than the dirty diesel, it's probably not gonna work. If I was engineering it myself, you know, as someone who works on diesel engines and engines every single day, I would do it exactly how they did it. All you have to be able to do is read instructions. And I know that there's a lot of people out there these days that don't even know how to read or vote properly. Um, but that's another whole thing. Slam her on and get her done. Thanks again, links in the description and uh, buy it through the link and I think you get some sort of deal. Not really sure, but should be good. Have a good day, my friends. We'll see you in the next video.